Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question one from the May 2015 POA paper two. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So it reads, the following list of transactions for Len Hansen occurred during the month of April 2014. So let's go through these transactions and fill in the T accounts as we go along. So on the first, it said started business with 7,800 in the bank. So once it says started business, we know the owner put money into the business. Any resource the owner puts into the business is, is known as capital and capital increases with credit. So we're gonna go in the capital account and we're gonna put a credit that says 7,800. That's how much was put in, what was put in, money was put into the bank and when, right? Now, uh, an issue a lot of people have is they think when they put this on the credit side, they are crediting the bank account. No, that is not what's happening. This credit entry is to the capital account. The bank account is an asset account. It's increasing because the owner is putting money into the bank account and that is recorded with a debit, which you will see on the debit side of the bank account. It says 7,800. How much was put in? Capital, where the money came from and the date. And again, you could use the hack I mentioned in my previous video where you credit where it's coming from and you debit where it's going and by it i mean the value or the money the money came from capital so that's why we are debiting the capital account and it's going to the bank account so you debit where it's going credit where it's coming from debit where it's going let's take a look at the second transaction okay so it says that we bought on credit from yasmin company goods with a total list price of 1800 dollars less 10 percent trade discount a cash discount of five percent is available if accounts are settled within 30 days so first things first, bought on credit, goods. That means we need to debit the purchases account. Purchases is an expense, and when expenses are incurred, we have to debit them to record their incurrence. Now you're seeing 1620. Where did that come from? Because it says here, list price of 1800. Well, there's a trade discount of 10%. 10% of 1800 is 180. 180 from 1800 is 1620. Now, you might be saying, well, why don't we put that 180 in the books? That's because, and listen carefully, trade discount is not recorded. I'll repeat that. Trade discount is not recorded in the books of accounts. On the invoice, you'll see it being deducted. But the figure thereafter, in this case, is 1620. That is the figure that is used for double entry. So you're seeing the debit to the purchases account. Now, Yasmin, we bought on credit from Yasmin, which means we didn't pay Yasmin, which means we owe Yasmin money. Yasmin is therefore a creditor which is a liability. In this case, it's increasing, and to record an increase in a liability, you credit the liability account. So you credit where the value is coming from, and you debit where it's going. The value is coming from Yasmin. The goods are coming from Yasmin, and they're going to purchases. So you credit where it's coming from, Yasmin, and debit where it's going. Let's take a look at the next transaction. Right, so on the six, it says, sold goods valued at 290 to John, who paid 120 by check with the balance to be paid later. Okay, so this is a little tricky because we have a value of goods being sold, 290. So our sales account has to be credited because sales is a revenue account and we have to credit revenue when we earn it. Now it's 290 and we are actually receiving 120 by check, which means your bank account has to go up. So you're gonna have to debit bank, but we also have the balance to be paid later. So if you sold goods worth 290, and we only receive 120, it means 170 is the balance to be paid later. That balance is owed to us by John, which makes John a debtor, which is an asset. And in this case, it's increasing. So in John's account, we're going to put a debit entry that says 170 to sales. So that's the credit sales aspect of it. In the sales account now, again, we're going to see two credits. One saying 170 to John, and the other saying 120 to bank. So the total amount here is 290, right? Being split up into a credit sale component, which is debited in John's account. And if we scroll up to bank, we are actually gonna see a debit to bank as well for 120 for the amount of money John paid. So again, your credit where it's coming from, the revenue of the money is coming from sales and it's going to John and bank. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction. So it says that Len Hansen took $60 worth of goods from the business to give to his friend as a birthday gift. Anytime the owner removes any resource from the business, that is drawings. Drawings is a reduction in capital and is recorded via a debit to the drawings account. Now it says purchases because the credit goes to purchases. 
Again, we don't use the stock or goods account to record movements or withdrawals of stock. The stock account, as we do it, is only used to record opening and closing stock. So we credit purchases to remove that value of goods from the purchases account. And that way, it, that value of 60 will not make it to the trading account and will therefore not be available for sale. So again, your debit in drawings and your credit in purchases. So your credit where it's coming from, the value is coming from the purchases account because we're taking goods out of it and we debit where it's going. It's going to, to drawings. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction. So it says, purchase equipment on credit from Equipo Company 3500. So if we purchase equipment, equipment is an asset. If it's increasing, we have to debit the asset account. Equipo Company. So we are buying on credit from Equipo, which makes Equipo a creditor, which is a liability, which in this case is increasing. So we'll have to credit the liability account. And again, the value of equipment, equipment is coming from Equipo and it's going to equipment. So you credit where it's coming from and you debit where it's going. All right, next transaction. So the next transaction says return goods to Yasmin company with a list price of 160. So returns outwards is where stock is decreasing, being sent back. So we're going to have to credit to record the reduction in stock. Also, it's an anti it's an anti expense. So you're sending goods back. So you, you need a credit to offset the amount you spent on it. Now it's going to go on the debit side of Yasmin's account because if you send goods back to Yasmin, you no longer have to pay for those goods, which means your liability is decreasing. And to record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. Also, goods are coming back from returns out to and being sent to Yasmin. So you credit where they are coming from and you debit where they are going. You'll also notice I have 144 and it says 160. Why? Because that was the list price. And if you remember, we had a 10% trade discount. So we have to deduct 10% of 160, which is 16, from itself, which will give us 144. Let's take a look at the next transaction. So it reads, returned 250 worth of equipment to Equipo Company. So our asset of equipment is decreasing because we are sending equipment back. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. If we are sending it back to Equipo, we owe the Equipo um, Company money. That was a liability. And if we're sending equipment back, it means we no longer owe as much money, which is a decrease in a liability, which is recorded via a debit. And again, equipment is coming from equipment. So you credit where it's coming from and it's being sent to Equipo. You debit where it's going. So you credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. Again, that hack only works for these easy transactions. For some of the more advanced ones, it does not work and should not be followed. What should be followed is the actual double entry process. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction. Okay, so it says, settle the account with Yasmin by check. Now, if you check it out, <laughs> no pun intended, 1620 and we send back 144, so you might think, well, we just have to subtract those two and we'll get how much we have to pay to Yasmin. But I want you to notice a couple of things. I have two entries here. I want a bank for 1402, I want the discount received. Why do I have that? Let's take a look back at the original transaction with Yasmin. So it says here that a cash discount of 5% is available if accounts are settled within 30 days. So that was on the 5th. We repaid Yasmin on the 25th, which was 20 days later, definitely within 30 days. So we were entitled to a 5% discount. So we'll take the 1620 minus 144. Then we'll find 5% of that and subtract it. 5% turns out, I think, to be $73.80, so I rounded up to um, $74, right? The difference had to go, of course, to the bank account, and we'll go on the credit side because we are paying, and if we are paying, it means that bank is decreasing. To record a decrease in bank, you have to credit because bank is an asset. Now, we're also noticing that we have a discount received amount, so let me scroll down on this side so I can show you the discount received account, which will receive a credit because discount received is an income. Uh, or revenue and we credit revenues when they are earned. For the last transaction, it says settled the account with Equipo Company by check and was allowed $50 off for early repayment. Okay, so let's take a look at the Equipo Company account. So initially we purchased 3500 worth of equipment on credit from them. So that was the amount of the initial liability and we returned $250 worth of equipment. That means that if we initially bought 3500 and sent back 250, we've decreased the liability by 250. So we currently owe them $3,250. Now, the question did say we settled the amount, sorry, settled the account with the crypto company by check. So we should pay them back 3250. But hold on, it says we were allowed $50 off for early repayment. So instead of paying them 3250, we're going to pay them 3200. 
So let's go to the bank first and see the entry in bank. So we're making a payment out of bank. Bank is an asset. If we make a payment out of an asset account, we are decreasing the asset. And a decrease in an asset is recorded with a credit to the asset account. So you're going to see the 3200 here, and every credit requires a corresponding debit. Now the debit to Equipo Company will say 3200 bank and 28th of April, because this is how much we paid, 3200. This is how we paid it from the bank account and when we paid it. Now what about that extra 50 we were allowed off? Well, that of course is discount we received. So just like in, in the previous question with Yasmin, right, so we're going to have to debit the Equipo Company $50 and say discount received, and we're going to have to go down to the discount received account. So, so as we saw in the previous part of the question, discount received is a revenue. And whenever we earn a revenue, we have to credit the revenue account. So we just saw the previous credit to bank for $3,200. This credit here to discount received for $50. And we're seeing the two debits here to equip a company for the corresponding entries. Okay, so now what we have to do is balance off these T accounts and extract a trial balance. So let's get that going. So let's balance off the bank account first. So on bank, on the bank account, sorry, we can see there's 7,800 on the debit side, but there's only about 4,600 on the credit side. So we're going to need a little extra, which is the difference between the total on the credit side and the total on the debit side to make it balance. So the totals are now gonna be equal and the balance is gonna be brought down on the debit side of 3,318, which we will put in the debit column in the, in the trial balance. So in the purchases account, we're seeing we have a debit entry of 1620 and a single credit entry of 60. So of course, we are going to need a balance carried down from the credit side in order to make both totals equal at 1620. And that balance is also brought down on the debit side, which we will put in the trial balance like so. Let's go to John's account. So in John, we see we only have one entry on the debit side. So that's going to be the balance carried down from the credit side and again brought down on the debit side. And in the trial balance, we're going to see that amount on the debit side as well for account receivable, which is an asset and assets have debit balances. Let's check out the drawings account. So in drawings, just like John, we have one entry on the debit side. So we're going to have the balance carried down from that for that same amount on the credit side. We're going to see the totals being equal and the balance then brought down on the debit side, which we are going to see reflected in the trial balance like so. Let's take a look at the, the equipment account now. So in the equipment account, we are seeing that we initially bought 3,500 on credit from Equipo and we sent back 250, which means there's 3,250 of equip worth of equipment left in the equipment account, which is going to be shown as a debit balance because assets have debit balances and the trial balance will also reflect that as well. Let's go across onto the capital account and deal with the accounts that have credit balances. Okay, so in the capital account, we have one entry on the credit side, which is going to be the balance carried down from the debit side and again brought down on the credit side. In the trial balance, we're going to see that reflected there on the credit side. Let's take a look at Yasmin's account now. So Yasmin's account is an interesting one because if you add up everything on the debit side and everything on the credit side, the totals are going to be equal. So there's no balance in that account because again, the totals on the debit and credit side were equal before we had to do anything. So no balance in that account, doesn't have any trial balance. Let's take a look at the sales account. So sales is a revenue account and we're seeing two entries on the credit side. So we're going to have a single balance being carried down from the debit side and again brought down on the credit side because sales is a revenue and revenues have credit balances. So this is also going to be reflected in the trial balance like so. Let's take a look at Equipo Company's account now. So just like Yasmin, Equipo Company's debit total and credit total are the same. So there's no balance remaining in the Equipo Company account. Let's take a look at returns outwards now. So there was one returns outwards, which had an entry, which, sorry, which is recorded as an entry on the credit side of that account, which means that the debit, sorry, the balance will be carried down from the debit side and ultimately brought down on the credit side, which will also be reflected in the trial balance like so. And finally, let's check out the discount received account. So discount received had two entries on the credit side because discount received is a revenue. So the balance will be carried down from the debit side and again, brought down on the credit side. And that will also be reflected in the trial balance like so and our trial balance, as you can see, balances. So please feel free to copy that down and double check the arithmetic, but um, I can assure you it balances. Okay, so that's about it for this question. If you guys wanna check out any other solutions, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and be sure to click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. Check out my website for free POA handouts and a link in the description below to free password for solutions. Anyhow guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.